Hi guys, and welcome to Bev's Repair Bench. Today is going to be the second installment of the JG Aurora printer repair. We've already established um, that there's two major problems with the printer. Uh, number one is that it doesn't turn on at all, which I'm going to go with a gut feeling that it's a power supply issue. And number two is that the connector for the heated print bed is burned up. Now, as far as the heated print bed goes, I'm going to drop that down as kind of a low priority fix um, and try to get the printer moving first. Um, obviously, we want it to turn on, so that's going to be the, the higher priority. But as far as printing with the non-heated bed, um, I'm going to actually try it and see how necessary the hot bed is as to how high up on the repair list I want to put that. So right now we're going to actually take the printer apart and we're going to pull the power supply and we're also going to do an internal inspection just look and see if anything else might be toasted in there. I do have a theory as to why this power supply doesn't work. Um, if you're familiar with the power supplies that are commonly used on these printers you probably have a theory too. Um, Alex I see you back there with your hand up and let's let the rest of the class get their theories going on this um, but no there's a very common issue with them and I'm almost positive that's what's wrong with it so let's get this thing tore apart and take a look at it okay so obviously the first thing we've done is unplug the heater and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the core too just to get it out the way and it looks like these four screws in the corner are what's going to have to come off and this printer has been disassembled before it's showing some definite signs of it uh, the main thing being that this rubber foot is missing on this corner which is not a big deal um, I'll find a replacement I'm sure and that one just fell on the floor so Okay, now I think, is that all that holds that on? No. Looks like there's three screws on the back of the printer. Some really small ones. These four may also need to come out, but I don't know yet. All right, let's try that again. Okay, something's happening. All right, let's see which way it needs to go. All right, it doesn't look like anything else is obviously burnt uh, do st I do think I smell a little bit of burnt coming from here all right and you've got to flip your printer back over choose the proper weapon and there's four screws holding the power supply in okay so now the power supply is actually loose we need to get all these wires removed and I think what I'm going to do is take a picture of it. Okay, so we've got the power supply loose and out. Let's go ahead and pop out a couple screws in these. Actually first, we are on a 110 volt setting so that makes me feel a lot better knowing that it was at least on the proper voltage. Okay, so we are in this power supply, and it looks like, let me see, this is very difficult to see. Let me see if I can drop the camera down where we can all see it. 
Okay, so just behind this heat sink that is actually for the uh, rectifier, there's a pair of NTCs. And most of the power supplies that I've worked with have only had one of these inside of it. This one actually has two, but they are extremely prone to failure. So I think that my first thing that I'm going to do is to actually short those out and plug the power supply in not into the printer but just into an AC cord and see if we get power out of it and the way that I'm going to short them out is I'm actually going to pull the board off flip it over uh, desolder both of the NTCs it's not nothing to desolder them and just solder in a couple of jumper wires if that fixes it uh, we'll look at replacing those NTCs I really don't like them because they are so prone to failure um, there are some larger ones that uh, I think Alex has actually had some pretty good luck with so if I do end up actually putting new NTCs in there that's what they'll be if not I may just put jumpers and kind of get away from the thermal protection a little bit now for those of you who may be thinking that the reason that the NTCs are going out is because the power supply is actually overheating and causing them to fry these the NTCs don't work that way um, they're not a fuse they're designed to open and close or well, actually the resistance is designed to react to temperature so the higher the temperature the higher the resistance however they are just for some reason they are extremely likely to go out they don't actually blow like a fuse. Speaking of fuse, I don't know why it took me so long to spot that. Uh, come on meter, get in there. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that fuse looks good to me. It's The wire is really hard to tell if the filament is still in it, but it looks good. Um, from the meter standpoint and yeah the wire does look good can't see the rating on it other than 250 volts uh, 10 amp is what is on the PCB but if experience with the Chinese market has taught me anything it's don't believe what's written on the PCB versus what's actually on the board All right, I'm gonna bring this to the bench and I'm not gonna make y'all guys watch me solder in some jumper wires, that's pretty boring. I'm gonna bring the power supply back whenever it's ready to test. Okay, so we've got the power supply on, it's still unplugged, obviously. But we've got it on a sheet of acrylic. This is actually the old bed mounting plate for the FL Sun. And you can see here, I've got two wires just kind of jumped where those um, NTCs used to be. And guys, you don't have to tell me. I know this is super dangerous and blah, 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 blah. You know, you can kill yourself and all. I'm comfortable doing this. I've been working with electrical for a long time, a lot longer than I've been working with electronics. If you're not comfortable doing stuff like this, then just please don't do it. Uh, get a professional. Buy a new power supply. These power supplies are really not that expensive. But if I didn't try to fix it, then what would I be teaching y'all on this channel? So let's go ahead and plug it in. And can you see? There we go. Uh, we expect to see 24 volts. This is a 24 volt power supply. Wow, 24.11. I don't even think I'm going to adjust the screw on that. And the LED is lighting just fine. Um, now this is without a load um, more than likely it'll be okay with a load it's a fairly new power supply so um, the capacitors are probably okay in it I think just replacing those NTC's with a jumper is gonna do it for now so now I need to make a decision on whether or not I want to replace those NTC's um, to be honest before I do that I would probably just get an entirely new power supply so 
for right now we're gonna run it with those jumpers so I'm gonna put the power supply back together I'm gonna put it back into the printer I'm probably gonna leave the printer kind of opened up like it is right now and we'll see if we get a little bit of life into this thing okay so we've got the printer plugged in although we haven't turned it on yet and there goes everything is plugged in yep Oh, we get a beep. And apparently I was wrong. That rocker switch in the back does not light up. And let me swing y'all around so we can look at the display here. There's really no motion that I can do right now. But we can do some navigation, I think. Okay, I think that's a little better. Um, so we can't move, we can't print, we can't home. Uh, we can check the settings. Ooh, man, the touch screen is nice. Um, change filament. We've got files. So I guess we can select either one of those. We don't have any installed right now. Continue about MKSTFT version 3.02. No Wi-Fi enabled. Um, home. No, that's that's actually gonna home. That's a little disconcerting, but I actually kind of like that. Um, okay, so that's gonna be the level of bed. More. There's no more. So I was a little worried that the printer inside of here was actually gonna be kind of packed with, you know, equipment and mechanics and things like that. But it's actually really, really open, so... That gives me a lot of room if I want to do modifications like adding Raspberry Pi and things like that. Um, this connector for the heater still needs to be changed out. Although, as I said, right now I'll probably actually put the heater, the um, printer together and try to print without the heated bed at first. Um, these connectors are cheap, but the kit that I would like to get is like 40 bucks. So I'm going to hold off for a little while, as long as I can to uh, just kind of not have to spend that kind of money um, but it's a really nice kit I'll probably try to throw like a little picture of it or something up but yeah I mean everything as far as the board and the touch screen appear to be working so let's I'll get this thing closed back up and I think episode three is going to be the completely assembled um printer and maybe doing a test print this is a this is actually pretty easy so far but don't worry after the actual machine is working um there will be documented modifications to it i do want to do a uh, bl touch um which i'll probably actually still do the 3d touch um and you know quite a few things is that an no, I, to, I thought they had an LED strip inside of that printer, like a LED light strip. That is a, that's a modification that we'll put on the list. LED lights on a printer. Alright, let's go ahead and turn this off. And I will see you guys on the next video. In the next video. So where does the... I'm guessing this is just going to go in EXP1. Possibly. Or is it going to go, oh, maybe it goes in AUX1. There we go. I think it does go in AUX1. It's a proper pin connector. I've never had a uh, touchscreen display, so I'm not familiar with how they're hooked up.